All right, guys, let's watch this and talk about it after. Java. I'm coming. It was so painful, I didn't even know when I screamed out. But it is supposed to be painful. Not as painful as it was for me. You know this only happens to people that have vaginismus, right? How am I supposed to tell Jesus that I have vaginismus? Like, after all this time. Ever since we got married, all we have done is try to have sex. And every time we have failed, I have felt like the failure because I couldn't... Because I couldn't please the man who graciously, so graciously waited until we got married to have sex. It was so painful that I screamed and now you wouldn't even let me touch you. Chaba, you're not innocent either. <laughs> Okay, you, 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 how could you have kept that whole, whole thing from me? This, this, uh, you're, 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 you're experiencing something really big and you wouldn't I'm have to sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is this? What, what is this thing? This issue? This thing you keep saying? What are you talking about? I know. I, I, I fucking know you're, you're, you're dealing with this vaginismus thing. What? What? What are you? I heard you. I, 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 I heard you on the phone. <laughs> so funny. Okay, th th this is not something to laugh about. But it is. I'm sorry that that I misunderstood this whole vaginismus thing. I should have spoken to you about it. I shouldn't have blamed you. I know that this honeymoon hasn't been anything like what we planned or wanted. But you've been a great sport and I should have been more understanding. All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about the movie Chemistry. Now, I know we've talked about communication a lot in many of our episodes, uh, prior episodes. And, you know, that's really because communication is really important. Uh, practically, every marriage already comes with a lot of issues. A lot of issues that arise from the fact that two people that barely know each other, that had different trajectories in life, all of a sudden come together out of love and decide to be a union now this union practically brings whatever personality whatever aspirations whatever mindset that they had in the past it brings them together and forces them to coexist in one space practically half of the problems we encounter in marriages all trickle down some way or another to communication so instead of us really just talking about communication by itself here i figure maybe let's take a different approach to it so for this particular discussion we're going to be talking about five ways that we can apply communication to your relationship to improve or reduce the friction from all the issues that could possibly arise now keep in mind i'm not saying that communication will fix everything uh, but i'm just saying that most of the problems could be addressed with communication and if it's applied early enough it would definitely curb some of the issues that we have all right so to start let's start with the first one and the first one is pretty much recognizing that there's a communication problem now just with any other thing in life you have to recognize that you have a problem and that's the only way your mind will be open to solving the problem the first thing that you can do to improve communication is to recognize that you guys have a communication problem and this could be done in so many ways but the bottom line is that you guys understand and i agree that some of the things uh, that come up could have been talked about and it wasn't and that led to this thing happening so really you're identifying how communication could have helped in your situation and we're not going to go down into the nitty-gritty of this because there's a lot of issues that could arise and all of them you know have different you know perspectives that you can see them from so you know the couple should do this by themselves identify how communication is lacking in your relationship the second thing is to find similarities as to how communication could help 
different issues that you guys have come across. Now, what does this really mean? This just means that with every issue that you encounter, there's always going to be something that was done or not done that had led to it. If truth be told, you know, in most cases, some of the problems that we have really boil down to people um, feeling like they did not need to communicate it. So what happens here is, you know, one person is thinking they shouldn't communicate. There's no point. The other person and some of these things could really just be based on their upbringing. You know, some men, for instance, would think that because they are providing for the family, they bring the money in into the family that, that they have the sole decision on how to spend it. Now, be it as it may, although you are bringing in all the money, although you are the breadwinner, although you are making the money for the family, and yes, the family has to live within the confines of the amount that you make, but it still doesn't mean that you shouldn't discuss issues as they arise or things that you think the family can do or not do. So yes, you shouldn't just make the decision by yourself. You know, bring your partner in, tell them, look, this is what you're thinking. And, you know, as much as this could have been cool if you guys did it, this is the reason why you believe that it cannot be done. It could be financial. It could be other things. You know, definitely a loving wife would appreciate the fact that this has been, you know, tabled. And yes, people might be sad because maybe a planned vacation has to be cancelled. But at the same time, the fact that you brought it up and discussed it with her, you're going to see that somewhere down the line, it's going to make the healing easy. The ability not to go anymore. It's going to make it easy and probably prevent a lot of um, people ignoring each other in the house, you know, because, you know, they're upset, but they're not saying it. The third one is to be open and honest. Now, the <laughs> one big issue in marriage that people should try to avoid is bottling things up. A lot of people try to keep peace by bottling up problems. The problem with bottling up issues is that after a while, that cup is going to overflow and you're going to burst, explode. And of course, you get upset for both the things they did today and the things they did one year ago or whenever they started keeping tabs. It's not a good thing to keep tabs and to, you know, uh, bottle things up in relationships. Uh, it's always a good idea to address them. Now, if somebody, your partner does something that you feel they shouldn't have done, you know, as long as you feel you should, it shouldn't have been done that way, it's always a good idea to bring it up. Hey, babe, you know, I noticed that you did this, you know, I, I don't really think you should have done it this way or you should have done it the other way or, you know, I feel like you hurt me by doing this. You know, you didn't put this into consideration or you didn't put that into consideration. You know, it's always good to talk about these things because once you talk about it, you let it off your chest. Once it's off your chest, you know for a fact that your partner now knows the problem, you know, and that's where the solution begins. You know, you can't solve something that the other party did not even know that they are doing. So keep that in mind, you know, you should not assume that your partner should have known or should know something, you know, so nobody is God, by the way. So uh, uh, they shouldn't have, they should have known that you like this or that you don't like that or that you, they shouldn't do this thing this way, you know, uh, this is common sense. Forget common sense. Focus on the fact that both of you are human beings and human beings that have different upbringing. So that means that they could be thinking something and thinking that is right while you would think the same thing and think that is wrong. So talk about it. Don't let it get bottled up and then explode one day and it might be the tiniest thing that they now did, but you're now taking out the whole dustbin on their head because you know, you have a lot of things. And, you know, once you get into that kind of phase of bottling things up, you are always almost never happy. There's like this moodiness that overtakes you. And that doesn't help or make a healthy marriage. Number four is active listening. 
I can't say this enough, you know, guys tend to be the parties that never listen to what their wives have to say. Uh, sometimes it's because the wives don't know what they're saying, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they know or they don't know. Listening and participating, engaging her in a communication as she so wishes is definitely a good thing. You know, it lets them feel like they're part of the family and it's necessary for everybody's sanity. You guys definitely do this a lot. You know, give your wives a listening ear. If you have something you planned on doing and you brought it up and she comes back the next day, two days later, and, you know, tells you she wants to, you know, she has this thing that she's thinking or she thinks you should do this a different way or whatever. It might be something related to business. It might be family issues. It might be ways to address something. Give you a listening ear. Don't have that mindset that you are the man and because of that you shouldn't listen. Men, listen. You know, and you listen because, first of all, she is part of the family. Second, is that she may make points that you didn't even think about. You know, keep in mind, everybody has something to contribute when it comes to family issues. So definitely listen to what they're saying and see how you can implement it if it's something that's implementable. See how you could put it as part of the plan. You might not have to revamp or change the whole plan, but factor in those things that you feel are of concern to her. In that way, you know, at the end of the day, it would really be two heads being better than one. Number five is setting boundaries, clear boundaries. Now, with many things that we do, it's kind of hard because you're dealing with somebody that you love. It's kind of hard to set these boundaries. You know, you let things go. You know, you overlook them. You push them under the rug. You know, yet it's things that hurt you. If there's something your partner is doing and you feel that it's going against your beliefs or it's going against your mental health, then, you know, you got to set those boundaries. You know, if it's somebody that doesn't know, at least they get to know. You know, there's a lot of things that are important in a relationship besides the love and the affection. You know, there's a lot of other things besides finance and money. There's a lot of other things. So all those personal things that affect your mental stability, it's always good to address it. And they would know that you don't like this or you do like this. And, you know, definitely take appropriate measures to make sure that those things get satisfied. Now, please keep in mind, you cannot set boundaries on how much you want to be spent on you. Your boundaries has to be something that's feasible, something that's doable, something that's within range. Uh, you cannot say because you are a beauty queen that he has to provide something that he cannot afford to provide. Or will break the family if you provide. So make sure the boundaries that are certain are realistic boundaries that are of benefit to your mental stability and also that of the family unit. Boundaries that make sense. Just in case uh, you don't understand what that means, boundaries have to be something that's attainable without breaking down the family unit or the family stability. This is pretty much the five things that I believe when applied communication can help bridge the gap of many issues that we have in marriages today or serious relationships today. You know, so if we go back and apply these things to the movie that we just watched, Chemistry, you will realize that the issue that they had wasn't even supposed to be an issue. He heard something that he thought meant something else. And because he decided to bottle it up and just take actions that was hurting the relationship because he thought he heard something that he didn't hear, you know, if he didn't do that, if he addressed the situation right away, then he would have found out that he was off, you know, track on his thinking and there wouldn't have even been any issues to address. You know, and that's definitely one of the things that I know communication bridges in a marriage. 
so if you love this kind of content guys please like share follow subscribe this is cj from mcnary studio and i'm here to